main items is the, we're considering the budget of the uh, Department of Military Veterans and then uh, the, 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 and then the next item is the budget consideration of the budget report. In other words, uh, vote 23. Uh, uh, now, having said that, uh, <clears throat> colleagues, uh, may I record uh, apologies? Brian, do you have apologies uh, from your side? Uh, Chair, we, we do have apologies. Uh, the first one would, is from the min Minister Mapisa Nakula. Uh, the second one is uh, Deputy Minister Makwetla. Uh, the third one is from Gosi Tebekulu, uh, with the fourth one being from uh, uh, General Olomisa. Thank you, Chair. All right. And, um, <clears throat> right. Uh, any other apology, honorable members, that you may be aware of? All right. Uh, 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 General, is there any apology that you want to uh, record from your side? Uh, good morning to the, all the honorable members. Uh, from the GMV, the only uh, apologies are the ones which uh, Brian has already alluded to. The minister, the Jewish minister, beyond that, we are all at least uh, ready to end this. Thanks. Thank you uh, so much. Right. Without wasting uh, uh, time, colleagues, let me invite uh, <clears throat> the general uh, to take us through the, the presentation. Um, general, I don't know how you have packaged the presentation because um, in, in your email, there are two presentations. One is the presentation on the, on the straight plan 2020-2025. And then uh, the presentation on the annual performance plan, uh, 2021. Now, I don't know how you intend, uh, you know, uh, doing the presentation, but please note you have 30 minutes. But I will give you uh, an injury time. Uh, but that depends on how well you are doing in, in, in presenting uh, the documents. How do you intend uh, going about it, General? We also have questions that uh, arose from the meeting we had, uh, and we would expect you to deal with those questions. I'm sure they have the way forwarded to your office. Uh, over to you, General. Uh, how do you intend uh, doing it? Thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. The idea was to go to the different presentation, but now with the time limitation, one would have to kind of reach the two presentation to be able to cover at least uh, the critical aspects as we go forward. But then based on the question, uh, with the understanding that the honorable members had an opportunity to have the presentation, they'll be able at least to assist us to respond where we might have at least uh, left some of the critical issues they might be have interest in. Exactly. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> we are together on that. Um, may I then uh, invite you to take us through? You, you can actually skip the few slides and just go to, I think it's your part C. Um, um, just, just, just bring it up. In other words, you skip the, the analysis, all that, the, the introduction, the mandate, and, and, and all that, and just zoom into the meat of the presentation. You skip. Thanks, Chair. Next slide.
Yes. Yes. Let's <clears throat> Thanks. Next slide, please. Thank Chair and Honourable Members. Uh, in this slide, which is slide 34, what we are trying to at least, uh, indicate here is just to say during this uh, five-year period, uh, 2019 to 2024, we are looking at the Minister's got priorities which have been set up, and trying at least to look at those priorities, whether in fact they are in line uh, with the medium term strategic framework priorities of government. And we have done that to confirm that, yes, they are in line. And also to take into account the National Development uh, Plan, which is Vision 2030, that all the necessary aspects are covered. And therefore, as a department, the minister has given at least a direction in terms of her priorities what you would love us to drive within this period in terms of the vision uh, 2030 National Development Plan in, and uh, the MTSF priorities. So all that is covered. Next slide. Next slide. Now we are then saying, uh, Chair, to be able to achieve this uh, five-year strategic plan, there are certain enablers which are critical for the department. And we put them and make them around about four of them. First one being visible and stable leadership to sustain strategic oversight. When we talk about leadership, we're talking about strategic leadership in the department in terms of the senior position, making sure that they are there and there is stability. Then also we are saying one of the enablers which is critical for us to deliver, we must have our organizational structure approved and it must be well resourced. Resourced in terms of, <coughs> sorry, from the human uh, resource element, from the ICT, from the funds and from the infrastructure which might require for the organization to function. And it is meant to support a service delivery model. That service delivery model, Chair and Honourable Members, speaks to more decentralizing the functions and bring them closer to the veterans in terms of where they are. Then if we follow that, we're saying that we would at least be able to uh, achieve these targets. We are talking also, number three, a well-defined infrastructure to support a fully functional department. Now that speaks to the head office. Not only that we've got the infrastructure in terms of uh, buildings, but the ICT infrastructure is also in place. And including the provincial offices, which are also at least uh, well uh, at least established with the ICT infrastructure being in place which also goes to the last enabler, which is a fully reliable, effective, and efficient integrated ICT system. Because if that ICT system is integrated, then it's reliable. We think then the department will be able to achieve what it has set itself, uh, itself to achieve. Next slide. In terms of the outcomes contribution to the achievement uh, of the impact, uh, the department will contribute to the national imperatives as guided uh, by the minister's priorities, taking into account also that we will be in line with the NDP vision 2030, and uh, we will also make sure that the medium term strategic framework priorities are taken into account. Our contributions will be enhanced by the reduction of unemployment as well as inclusive economic growth, especially among youth, women, and people with disabilities. Of course, now, Chair, taking into account what's happening with the advent of COVID-15 and the challenges of that, that's going to be a very critical aspect. 
and we are looking at the military veterans also being empowered and be able to play a role uh, in terms of moving forward the democratization of South Africa. When we talk of the key risk and how we see ourselves uh, mitigating this risk, Chair and Honourable Members, our outcome, we talk to socio-economic sectors of military veterans, community improved and sustained. The first risk is we are going to be at least improving and sustaining the socio-economic status of military veterans becomes the issue of the inadequate integrated internal and external business systems. That speaks to how then within the department and outside the department we are able to make sure that our systems are integrated and adequate. And we are saying we are going to mitigate that by making sure that we develop those systems and we make sure that they are integrated. Then one of the risks, uh, Chair, which you would be aware of is exactly that strategic leadership uh, which uh, the department has been faced with in terms of stability, especially at a senior level, for some time. And the way to mitigate that is to make sure that the the recruitment plan, which is approved, is implemented to its uh, full extent. The organizational structure of the department uh, is not necessarily that fully aligned with the service delivery model. And we are saying we need to at least uh, make sure that we obtain approval and implementation of the aligned organizational structure and the service delivery model. Yes, presently, the service delivery model which we have developed, uh, one can at least uh, indicate here that having processed it through the one of uh, public service administration, there is an understanding that model is acceptable. The only thing is to finalize between ourselves and the of service, public service administration, the organigram of the department. In terms of the legislative and regulatory and policy framework, there are challenges there, uh, Chair, and the way to mitigate is make sure that we process in a speedy manner the final amendment of the Military Veterans Act number 18 of 2011. And our regulations need to be aligned uh, to that act. And of course, the policies must also be developed along the very same lines of the Act and the regulatory framework. The culture of the organization doesn't at least uh, fully allow us to achieve what we would love to achieve as an outcome. And therefore, we're looking at the question of introducing organizational change management processes as a mitigating uh, measure. Also, when it comes to the stakeholder management and the strategy of that stakeholder management, we need to look at the efficacy and effectiveness of that. And we say we need to develop that and implement the stakeholder management and strategy going forward to be able to achieve what we want to achieve. Next slide. When it comes to the district uh, development model of government, we are saying as a department, we have not fully matured to have our own project at district level because we tend to rely more on other line function department to be able to uh, do any activities at the district level. But with time, we are looking at, uh, at finding means and ways that we also find a way of playing a role in terms of that district development, uh, district development model. And we're going to use this financial year to fine tune how we are going to be able to pitch up so that too, as a department, we are able to relate to the model which government is at least uh, embarking upon. Next slide. Chair, in terms of 
the strategic plan, we are saying it will form the basis of measuring the performance of the department. And the critical success factors uh, for the department to perform at a higher level is a well-structured, well-staffed organization and also accommodated in good facilities with best policies and systems, including the IC system. So this is what we are uh, saying. And of course, that issue of the intergovernmental relation becomes very critical in terms of our approach as a department, because we are of the view that we can extend our service delivery to intergovernmental by exploiting some of the other sister government departments, both at national, provincial, and up to the local level, uh, Chair. Thanks. Next slide. Chair, this would be speaking more to the technical indicator description, which I would probably venture to say only if there are specific questions, one wouldn't love to dwell much on this, except to say we've got them, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I am not quite sure whether then I have done justice, Chair, in terms of uh, the expectation, because one is tend to be concerned with time management. Yes, uh, General. Uh, I think we can now go to your annual performance plan. I think that was fine in so far as the strike plan. Again, you just zoom in. I think you start from part uh, C of your of your presentation, where you zoom into the service delivery um, indicators. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Next slide. No, no. Go back to see. So what now? Thank, thank, thank you, Chair. Here we are, with your permission, Chair, trying to look at the, again, the priorities of the uh, executive authority and trying to align them uh, in terms of the uh, vision 2030. And uh, mainly we are looking at the strengthening the governance and oversight protocols to give effect to the provision of the act. But when we go to priority one, we then begin to look at the issues of education, access to health and wellness, and we align that. I think this is what we have already at least alluded in the uh, previous uh, presentation, but we are confirming it here. Next slide. Same aspect here, Chair. Next slide. And presently, this is our chronogram, which won't be spending time. I would at least uh, imagine that the honorable members chair are familiar with this uh, chronogram. In terms of the budget allocation, uh, chair, we are beginning at least, uh, if we concentrate now mostly on the, uh, what we call medium term expenditure uh, estimate, and looking at the 2021 20, and going to 21, 22, and 22, 23, and we look at the allocation for the different programs. 
the allocation in total is uh, 683 uh, million, but the bulk of that is found mainly uh, in program two, and the reason why mainly is found in program two, about most of our benefits, uh, eight of them out of 11 are sitting at program two. This is why it's kind of at least a, a pack in that manner, Chair. Next slide. Now, Chair, if then we begin to look at the, um, the administration output indicator in terms of the annual target, and then uh, we will look probably in terms of uh, the outputs, where the first one we talk about an unqual unqualified audit opinion. And then we say uh, we are looking at unqualified and uh, going forward. The logic be behind there is our systems are still mainly uh, at least uh, manual. This is why we are looking at making sure that that IC system is in place, it would uh, help us to begin to move to a better level of uh, at least uh, audit opinion. Then in terms of uh, the payment of invoices in 30 days, we are looking at 90%. Okay, logic behind there is more of the IT system in terms of uh, the processing of the invoices. Our strategy in terms of the IT um, Information communication technology, we are looking at having it approved in this uh, financial year, share, which is almost a, a similar aspect in terms of the human resource management strategy, uh, which also we've been found wanting. We're looking at uh, having it approved this year from the administration side. Next slide. The issue of the enablers to achieve the targets is almost uh, what we've alluded to, Chair, in terms of that uh, strategic leadership, organizational structure, and then infrastructure, ICT. And we are just saying in the, uh, as a last bullet that we are striving for continuous improvement to achieve financial viability and sustainability. Now, we are looking at the, in this uh, particular slide, uh, Chair, in terms of the expenditure trends and estimates by sub-programs. Then if we move to SES, which is socioeconomic uh, support, this is uh, program two. The issue, the first issue becomes the National Military Veterans Database. And if we look at the 2021, we are looking at at least uh, making it a point by the end of this financial year, 70,000 military veterans who are in our database in terms of all their details and all their dependents, everything is in place. And we're also able to know who are active in our military, military database, being active, those who are accessing benefits. The second output, it speaks to uh, housing. And we are looking at 710 uh, going forward. That is 2010 as a target. And then compensation. We are also at least uh, improving uh, in terms of compensation going forward. Next slide. In terms of uh, transport, uh, public subsidized public transport, this is a, a new indicator. And we were looking at uh, this financial year, being able at least uh, to launch this uh, benefit with about 600 military veterans and working very close with the Department of Transport. Education uh, support to military veterans and their dependents, we're looking at the figure of uh, 7,400 in this financial year. 
in terms of uh, access to health uh, care service, we're looking at the uh, figure of 19,000 uh, children. Counseling and uh, dedicated counseling and treatment of uh, military veterans and their dependents. We are. What's that, what's that figure? I'm missing the figure. Thank you. Next slide. 7, it was uh, sorry. 7,400. 7,400. Yeah. That was uh, since. Now, when we look at all the new, uh, the annual targets, uh, starting from the housing as uh, one is in the, uh, starting to the database going down and uh, going also to the quarterly targets. Uh, it is quite vi visible what we are looking at uh, right through quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And that's how we see ourselves uh, going forward in terms of sales trend. Next slide. In terms of uh, benefit support services, we are looking at this uh, and making sure that the policies and the memorandum of understanding with the Department of Defense, the service level agreement and the review of our SOP that is done. And we also clean and update the database uh, and uh, we make sure that it is credible. For housing benefit, in terms of uh, finalizing again the policy and we review our MOUs with the Department of Human Settlement and our service level agreement with the provinces, this is what we are looking at. And uh, also making sure that the integrated, uh, the intergovernmental relation is in place to make sure that from all spheres of government, we are able, as we said, to do what is expected of us. One of the challenges which we are looking at, we think we might be able to deal with it, is the issue of how do we assist the widows and orphans who are out there of the military veterans who have passed on. That's one of the critical areas, including at least they're trying to profile uh, people who are living with disabilities as members of the military veterans community. In terms of health and well being of uh, benefit, mainly we are exploring the issue of the national health insurance so that we can be part of that uh, as we move forward. And of course, looking at, uh, except using the Department of Defense, whose facilities are most, it is uh, centralized in terms of Western Cape, uh, Free State and uh, Houghton, how do we exploit the other uh, Department of Health systems and hospital at a provincial level, so that the military veterans cannot necessarily be only relying on the DOD going forward. Next slide. The compensation benefit, we are looking also at making sure that we are in line and we are working very closely with the relevant government departments, which is the same with education support in terms of the uh, agreements at the uh, Department of Higher Education and Training, Department of Basic Education, and we are also again uh, dealing with the provinces in terms of making sure that who are able, he said, to even track our students per school, whether they are in the class and also the progress in relation to that. In terms of both uh, the two policies, transport and uh, which is subsidized transport, public transport and pension benefits, those policies we are at least uh, in an advanced stage in terms of their draft policies, and we were banging on that by now would we have advanced with the sister departments due to the challenges again of COVID-19. We are kind of delayed there, but that was the original plan. Next slide. The expenditure trend and estimates here uh, in terms of uh, 2021, Chair, you would see that mainly the 
bulk of the money in this program will be spent on the socio-economic support management. And this is where you find education support. This is where you find housing. This is where you find public um, uh, subsidized transport. And this is where you find uh, pension. So this is why mainly the money is there. And the second part, uh, in terms of uh, the expenditure trend, we will be seeing that uh, more on the health of military veterans and their well-being also because of who they are. Uh, that's why we spend uh, most of the money in this environment. Next slide. In terms of uh, empowerment and stakeholder management uh, output indicators and uh, annual targets, uh, we're looking at the memorial activities coordinated for military veterans. And we're saying we are looking at uh, about nine of those uh, this uh, financial year. And we're also looking at the question of uh, the payment within 30 days of the uh, burial claims coming from the uh, dependents and the military veterans. And we are saying that uh, as the claims come, we'll be able to pay them within uh, 30 days uh, in this regard. In terms of uh, assisting and providing skills uh, to military veterans uh, and empowerment to military veterans, we are looking at this uh, financial aid uh, at a figure of 1,000. Uh, here we are target targeting and working very closely with the sister departments where so we are looking at so the general. I don't know what has happened with the, the slides. They, they are no longer moving. Uh, I can see now your own slide. Um, I don't see the number there. I think you have passed this one by about four or five slides. Whoever is controlling the slides, can uh, can he or she move the slides? Thank, thanks, Chad. We will at least uh, sure. just, just, just forget to the other slide. Chad, we are... Just go ahead. So we have covered that. We were just saying uh, that is uh, slide 32. We're speaking to the empowerment and stakeholder management chair. Next slide. Now uh, that is uh, slide uh, 33 chair, which was speaking to the issues of um, which we have already covered in terms of uh, the memorial activities for the military veterans, where we're saying there will be nine of them. There are claims uh, paid uh, within 30 days. We said we're looking at 100% of that when the claims come through. I'm not quite sure whether we are together, Chen. I'll just confirm it. I didn't get that, uh, General. I was confirming, Chen, that uh, are we are the slides now as we are engaging them and uh, talking to them, are they no. moving on yours? I'm, I'm not too sure if the problem is is is, is from my side. Uh, they they have not moved since. Uh, Brian, what's what's the problem? Are your slides moving? Slides in about eighty. I'm requesting to pay. There's a problem. I don't know what I, I'm, I'm struggling to hear you, Brian. I was also struggling to hear Tapo. Yes, Brian. I'm, I'm saying she, we will be con conducting the general just to uh, check what the problem is. All right. Uh, members, hello, Tabo. Uh, Mr. Mutla, you wanted to say something? No, no, it's fine. Just say, I wanted to say the same thing that Brian said, uh, uh, which the slide, that it's not only on your side, Chair. Okay, no, it's fine. All right. Uh, okay, it's fine. Uh, continue. Please, I'm sure you have your slides on your gadgets. Not so. Or you're all, you're all dependent on this one. Uh, sir, mine, mine is also not moving. Are you? Can you? 
Well, uh, on our side, then uh, we will be looking for IT and see if they can at least uh, come and assist us uh, in that regard, so that at least uh, these slides can move. Yes, uh, we, we, need, we, we need to we need to to do that general because this thing would be a streamed live. Other people are dependent on what is beamed on on the screen because they don't have the documents uh, either in the um, on the, on their laptops or or, or before. Them. So they, so so I think we need. Uh, Brian, are we attending to it? That is correct, sir. Yeah, because we are still on slide thirty. Yes, sir. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think aloud. We're pulling it down, and um, uh, and pulling it up again. Not help the situation. Uh, let me let me request them to do that. I will just quickly get on the phone and, and communicate with them. Uh, but I, I I know that IT is also calling them uh, because IT is also with us. So they have, they have just confirmed with me on the phone that they are calling them. Well, the, the slides are controlled by them in Pretoria. That is correct, Chair. As they are as they are presenting, they are moving the slides. They are moving the slides. Oh, I thought we were doing it ourselves uh, from where you are. No, no, okay. Okay, okay. sure. Good. <clears throat> Chair, we are sitting up uh, for your information. We are sitting up at AMSCO building. Well, who, who's that? May knows that? Chair. That was the general chair. Oh, he says they are oh, they are in AMSCO building. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. We are in, in Amsco building, Chair, and we are relying now on the uh, IT uh, people, okay. which uh, they've been called to come on board, so that you have got a sense of uh, where we are seated and probably our challenges which we are faced with in terms of the technology. Okay, no, thanks. Uh, it's understood, General. Yeah. All right, colleagues, um, I think we're at slide number 33. Um, and uh, 33 out of 42, so you had about uh, nine slides uh, to go. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I was uh, getting tempted to ask you to uh, go ahead, but now that uh, other people who are linked to this um, uh, to this meeting, I dependent uh, uh, wholly on the on the slides. It would be unfair uh, to them if I let you go ahead uh, and do the presentation. I know some of them are viewing it for the first time, and uh, we are fortunate uh, that uh, you know we are getting this presentation uh, for the second time as as the portfolio committee. So there is no issue for on our side. 
The problem is more on those who, um, the members of the public, the media and everyone else who are listening to you general for the first time. Um, they see the slide, but um, they uh, uh, not moving yet. You are steaming ahead with your presentation. Uh, and they get lost, um, as, as it were. So that is that is the challenge. Um, uh, are they nearer to you now, General? Uh, are they attending to it, to the IT? Are they we, the IT system? We are engaging them uh, through the uh, cell phone to get some direction from them. They have not in person uh, managed to come through, so we are engaging them through uh, cell phone to make, they are giving us some kind of direction of what we need to do. Okay, General, let, let's do, okay, now it's moving. There's some movement. Uh, can we move again? Uh, there's some movement a bit. You're on slide number 30. Yeah, I, I also see the movement here. Yes, there is. Chair, we're handing over control to the other end so that the control and the movement can be managed on the other end than managed from this side. It looks like it's working. It's working, okay. All right. Um, so, okay, that's slide number 33. Just go back to slide uh, number number 30 and wind up nicely on it before you move off to the other two slides and, and, and the rest of the slides. General, uh, yes, you are there. Yes, yes. I was uh, in those uh, uh, planned performance over the medium term. We were just uh, indicating in terms of the compensation benefit that the most important thing there for us to be able to at least uh, deliver this benefit to deserve military veterans, we've got to strengthen our relationship with the uh, government uh, pension administration. Uh, in terms of our MOUs and make sure that things are in place. For the education support, we've got also to strengthen our MOUs and uh, service level agreement with uh, both Department of Higher Education and Training and Basic Education, including for especially to going to the level of uh, provincial level and also working with NSPAS. In terms of uh, transport and pension benefit, we're saying uh, these are the new policies which uh, and this uh, needs to be finalized so that we can start dispensing those policies to the military, deserving military veterans. And we're working very closely again with the sister departments to achieve that. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, in slide 31, Chair, all what we're saying here in terms of the expenditure. The trend has been all along in this uh, program to spending most money on social support management, which speaks to the benefits of uh, education support. It speaks to housing. It includes the uh, subsidized public transport and uh, the uh, pension part of it. The next, at least, uh, amount of money uh, okay, uh, is spent on the health and well-being of the uh, support of the military veterans. So in the main, that's how then we, 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 the, the estimate seems to be in this program. Next slide, 32. Next slide, 33. Thank you, Chair. On, on this one, Chair, all what we are saying we are just saying in terms of uh, trying to uh, coordinate memorial activities for the military veterans, we are looking at this, uh, the target uh, indicator there, which is 301, PP1301. We are looking at nine of those activities. In terms of uh, uh, target PP1302, which is uh, uh, bureau claims, 
We are looking at that those invoices as they come, they will be at least uh, paid within uh, 30 days. In terms of uh, providing skills uh, to the military veterans, we are looking at a figure of 1,000 uh, in this financial aid uh, chain. Next one. In terms of uh, access to business facilitation programs, we are looking at a figure of uh, 110. Now, that is uh, slide 34. Thank you. Now, in terms of uh, PPI 305, we are speaking to the employment opportunities for military veterans. And we are talking of uh, this annual uh, uh, Financial year was speaking of uh, 20 of those. And for the memorial sites erected for the mil uh, military veterans this year, we are talking to three of those uh, uh, sites for military veterans. So we then move to 3 5. All what we are indicating, the very same uh, performance indicators from PPI uh, 301 to 306, and uh, the output indicators as indicated there, and looking at the annual target as said, we are then indicating how then do we aggregate those uh, on a basis of a quarterly basis, how we want to measure going forward. Thanks. Next one. Next uh, slide, 36. Now, in terms of uh, plan performance over the medium term in this environment, in terms of the enablers to achieve the target set in this environment, again, we are talking to uh, making sure we, especially when to talking to the uh, skills training uh, in this environment, that we looking at the working relations with identified sector education and training authorities. And we are also coming uh, establishing formal working relations with youth, women, and people uh, with disabilities departments and organizations that is Department of Social Development and NYDA. And then uh, in terms of uh, working relations with the Department of uh, Social uh, Small Business Development, Department of Employment and Labor, Department of um, Human Settlement, Department of Trade and Industry. In those environments, we want to strengthen those relationships so that we can be able to, uh, to get more benefit from that environment. And we are looking at uh, programs of incubation and mentorship for our military veterans uh, who are doing businesses so that at least they can be able to be able to stand up on their own under our at least a guidance going forth, assisted by our other stakeholders. And uh, we are also looking at uh, the issue of, uh, in terms of uh, jobs and business opportunities to be created uh, through the Job Summit and Operational Pakistan uh, going forward. We want to at least uh, do advocacy for the inclusion of the military veterans in terms of the skills gap analysis in the national skills uh, gap, uh, uh, national skills uh, fund environment uh, going forward. Next slide. For the issue of heritage, uh, we are also saying that uh, we need to make sure that uh, we work with, uh, in terms of the uh, promotion of liberation history of uh, the South Africa, we need to work with the school so that it can be promoted in that environment. And uh, in terms of facilitation and coordination of the inclusion of the mainly non-statutory forces, military veterans history in memorial parks. So we are looking at that. Uh, so that at least uh, we can be seen to be part of the bigger South Africa. 
and we're looking at uh, facilitation participation of military veteran in, in terms of resistance liberation heritage route and sector approval by the Indian Minister Ministerial Co Committee and of course working very closely with the Department of Arts and Culture uh, in achieving those. That was slide 37. Then slide 38. Uh, in terms of the expenditure trends uh, in this sub-program, the bulk of the budget chair is found mainly in the stakeholder management, as indicated, and also speaking to our provincial offices, to make sure that they are established and function uh, going forward. The second part of that uh, budget uh, <clears throat> is going to the empowerment and skills development, uh, which also is a bigger chunk, where we're looking at mainly at least uh, empowering and skilling our military veterans and assisting them in terms of job placement. This is what we're looking at. And the last part speaks to heritage, memorial, and uh, burial, and uh, honoring of uh, military veterans. Next slide, which is 39. Now, in terms of uh, this slide, we are looking at the risk term, where these, those uh, key risks and uh, the mitigating measures are the ones which we've alluded to uh, in terms of the strategic plan as it was presented. Uh, so I won't be repeating those. Next slide. In terms of uh, projects, as far as the infrastructure is concerned, uh, we are looking at uh, at least uh, finding and acquiring a permanent uh, DMV headquarters. We are looking at also acquiring uh, provincial offices and so that we can have a footprint in those areas. And we are looking at the issue of uh, headstones and memorial sites and the amount of money uh, indicated there as we go forward are uh, also indicated uh, in terms of the total estimates. Slide 41. The annual performance plan 2021 of PMD, we see it uh, as our basis uh, in measuring the performance of the department for the next uh, five-year period. And of course, the critical success factors for high performance, as it was indicated, uh, if we've got a well-structured and staff organization and house in good facilities and the policies are in place and our systems, uh, especially the ICT systems, we think we can at least achieve what is expected of us. And again, as this was indicated, uh, without belaboring the point, is the ease of the whole government approach uh, in making sure that the military veterans are assisted right through the spheres of, uh, of government from the national all the way to the local level. Chair. That would be the presentation, Chair. Thanks for your patience and also understanding, especially uh, in relation with the glitches with the I ICT aspect of it. Thanks. Chair. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, uh, General, for, for the presentation. Welcome. It's comprehensive. Um, there are questions that we forwarded to the, your office. Um, I'm not too sure if you've seen the questions uh, arising. Those questions are, uh, arise from our the committee interrogation of your budget uh, in preparation of this meeting. Um, have you seen those questions? Yes, we have seen the questions, sir. Okay, uh, may you then talk to those questions um, so that uh, <clears throat> we then move to the next round of questions and, and answers. Uh, 
the 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 first issue chair which was uh, raised was the issue which speaks to the COVID-19 and uh, of course uh, us having at least uh, now as a department vote uh, 26 and uh, how then do we begin to look at the utilization uh, of this budget during this period would I be then uh, responding to what before I start going on that, that that's what I have at my side uh, chair yes you may respond <clears throat> Well, uh, Chair, in terms of uh, the COVID-19, uh, as a department, we have taken into account what's happening and we've been participating uh, in the bigger uh, scheme of things uh, at national level with other government departments. And uh, we have been getting the necessary stakeholders which speak to the Department of uh, Public and Service Administration as far as how we deal with the military veterans in the department. And uh, yes, uh, we are taking care of our workers and we have dealt with the uh, facilities within the department. But for the veterans themselves, we are at least uh, working with the social impact uh, work stream uh, under, the, uh, under the social um, cluster. And for the empowerment side, we are at least uh, following that with the economic uh, work stream at the national level uh, chair in terms of uh, this aspect. And within the department, we've got also, at least uh, in terms of uh, risk management, an integrated team which is looking at that. In terms of uh, chair, the issue of uh, the amendment of the Military Veterans Act, we have looked at the issue of how do we move forward with the Act, and we have come to a conclusion that the Military Veterans Benefits Regulation of 2014, uh, in terms of Section 24.1, uh, to be compliant with that, which allows us to at least uh, address some of the challenges within the regulatory framework. That's the priority in terms of dealing with the shortcomings, uh, in terms of supporting and uh, assisting military veterans to benefit whilst we're looking at the short, uh, shortcomings of the Act. In terms of the amendment of the Act, there are two options here, which can, if we do the holistic approach, including uh, the green paper, white paper, and the timeframes and consultation with the other clusters, we have at least presented that to the ministry and we have received guidance about how to move forward with that and looking at making sure that at least by 2021, uh, by 2021, we are able to have at least an amended Military Veterans Act. That's the direction we have received from the ministry going forward. In terms of the policies, Chair, uh, which are indicated uh, by us and the policies we have, we've got some of the policies which are approved policies for benefits of military veterans, but are under review uh, because of our experiences. Those are policies like housing, education, skills development and training. The ones which are in a draft format as we speak are more uh, burial, heritage, memorialization and honor. And we are looking at dedicated counseling and treatment, compensation of injury, trauma and disease. Those we are looking at them finalizing in this financial year. We are at an advanced stage in terms of consultation with the stakeholders mainly, we are talking here to the advisory council, the appeals board, and the SANVA. So that's those ones. The ones of uh, pension, subsidized public transport, as it will get a chair, they are new policies, although there were the benefits which were there, but we didn't have policies. But the draft now of these new policies are at an advanced stage. The only delay to finalize now 
is just the engagement with our sister department so that we can go for consultation uh, moving from there. But we were of the view before the advent of COVID-19 uh, that would be able to finalize by this financial year. We'll see whether that will be uh, also still a uh, feasible chair. In terms of the strategic focus chair, uh, from the side of the department, both the internal and external environment, we have done a piece of our bit, and we have done the analysis of what we are looking for. I think uh, we have taken uh, that environment into account. But for the military veterans, who there's a question which speaks to the MSDS and SAN gear uh, chair. What, 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 what number is that? That would be more under number three, chair. Number three. Yeah. Three, two. Um, I'm not sure whether we are speaking the same language. Okay, you may continue. It says that I, I have a, I don't know if we have the same set of questions. Um, because I'm implying, are we having the same set of, set of questions? Uh, Chair, I, I, I should think that we, we we have the same set, but then I'm not sure because the document was sent through the ministry, so I would not know whether they've effected amendments to the documents or, or not. But then it should be the same set of questions that that we had sent. Okay. Okay. My, my, my list has how many questions? Let me just look. My list has twelve questions. Uh, Directed to the department, your department. How many have you got? Yeah, I've got eight here. I've got eight. You know why? Why? Why I I asked this question is is because uh, just when I thought you were following uh, the questions, um, but I got lost when you started talking about uh, things that. I'm not too sure, uh, uh, you know, anticipated by by the questions that we have posed. Um, okay, let's 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 go to question four and see how it goes. What, what is your question four? I just need to get to, and I just need to understand if we are on the same page. Question four. Question four was mainly in terms of us uh, looking at how then do we looking at the question of uh, the risk register. And uh, that, that was mainly that in terms of the the uh, Department uh, Enterprise Risk Register. And how then we're looking at mitigating those. See, my question for reads, uh, the DMV should indicate when it will finalize the amendments to the Military Veterans Act, as this has been a pressing matter for at least the past four years. And then question five, it reads, Various institutional policies are listed on page 16 of the strength plan, but it should be indicated which one are approved and which, which ones are being revised and what are the timelines to finalize them. Uh, question six, while reference is made to the subsidized public transport policy, this benefit has not, been, has not yet been delivered to military veterans. What exactly are the challenges in this regard? as this has been a concern since the Act and the regulations have been passed. Uh, question 7 reads, the Department states that it does not have any relevant court ruling. The DMV is asking to provide an update on the case involving Zeal Health. 
who have instituted a claim of 198 million against the department. That's what you alleged, alleged uh, in, in your presentation. And then commit, uh, number nine, the committee requests the age distribution of the military veterans, as this can assist in planning as well as indicating where the main focus of the department should be. Um, uh, question nine, the finalization of the national database has been a critical issue for years. The defense committee have set deadlines with regard to the database and the portfolio committee should be given an update in this regard. A question 10, the committee would like to be briefed on the implementation of the recommendations of the skills audit. Question 11, the department should provide the committee with reasons why it is struggling to fill vacancies uh, in especially the top echelons of the department. And the last question, the underperformance of and underspending of the department are concerning and the committee would like the department to brief it on the main reasons for these challenges. Uh, so these are the questions uh, that we have posed uh, to the, the department general. And uh, I'm not too sure if you've seen them. We are at least uh, indicating that uh, from the department, we didn't see those uh, questions. Okay. And we are, we are trying also to engage the chief of staff uh, in the office of the minister who is with us uh, to figure out uh, between the uh, parliamentary officer and ourselves uh, what happened. But presently, we are not having those questions the way you are the two events. Yes. Uh, this has been uh, two, three weeks that uh, these questions were forwarded uh, to your office. Let me just look at the date. Um, I think it was on the 5th of, um, of, of May that these questions were sent to, to, to the ministry. Uh, and it's, it's regrettable that you have not uh, received them and therefore you're not prepared to deal with those questions. Okay, colleagues, uh, here's, it, uh, uh, here's it May. Can we then just uh, uh, pose the fresh questions? Uh, but still keep in, in, in mind that we had this list of questions that we still expect the department to come back to us with detailed answers, answers uh, to, to them. Not oral answers, answers in black and white, because the questions are in black and white. I now move to oral questions and oral answers. Uh, over to you, colleagues. Yes. Um, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mare. Uh, who else wants to? Who else wants to uh, 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 speak? Is Mr. Mare first? Uh, any other? Shalem. Uh, Mr. Shalem. Any other? Any other? I know some colleagues may be using this gadget to indicate whether they want to uh, speak. Uh, all right, let me just take these two questions for now. Uh, Mr. Mare. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Just one question to the General. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, just in terms of, uh, you said that you're working with social Department of Social Development and, and that, but um, we know that many of our veterans will require medical support um, in terms of COVID-19 going forward in the next year. You have not mentioned specifically with regards to medical, so that is access to not only the military hospital, but clinic, etc. Um, how how, how are, can you know, repeat the question, Mr. Mare? I thank you. Okay. Now, I, I've, I've asked uh, in terms of the, the um, uh, planning going forward, uh, the general mentioned about the veterans and where they're working with social development. Um, but my question is specifically with regards to medical support to our veterans in the different areas 
uh, in terms of access to both the military hospitals, but also clinics uh, and doctors. I mean, they might be sick, they might need COVID-19 support, um, and whether specific arrangements have been made in that regard. Because they are sometimes vulnerable people and in vulnerable communities. Thank you very much. Yes, no, thank, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Mr. Schulembe? I don't hear you, Mr. Schulembe. Can you set your mic on, please? Yes, you are now on. Uh, you may speak. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. My question will refer to the issue of, I mean, um, the service level agreement between the Department of Military Veterans and the provinces. It is said that, I mean, um, provinces and... Uh, we're not... Uh, I just want to know if just want to know if all provinces have signed the savings level agreement. If they have not signed, maybe if I can be given the reason why those provinces have not signed. The reason being why I'm asking that question is um, we have seen in a previous report that uh, in some provinces there is a lack of uh, houses delivery to the military veterans. Then I would appreciate maybe to know whether all provinces have signed the service level agreement so that we know if the performance will be uh, in line with what is expected in this annual performance agreement. Thank you. Okay. No, no, it's fine. No, thank you so much, Mr. Shalembe. All right, uh, General, you may then uh, assist us with the answers. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honourable Members. The question from Mr. Murray, which speaks to the uh, medical support to military veterans. The Department of Military Veterans is working with the Department of Defence, and of course, uh, knowing all the three military hospitals, but we are also using the footprint of the SA India with regards to the sick bays, which are found uh, in some of the provinces where the military veterans can access that. But during this period, we've also at least uh, been guided by the South African Military Health Services about how to handle uh, the present period. And they are, in terms of those who might be affected or probably suspecting to have any challenge, referred to the South African Military uh, Services in terms of the various provinces to be able to access and visit them where they are if there's a challenge. Those who are on medication, chronic medication, we are at least uh, utilizing uh, our provincial uh, offices in terms of health desk to quickly go to where they are because they've got permits in terms of movement and get and, uh, at least uh, the medication required for them and deliver to the military veterans. So this is what we are uh, at least uh, managing uh, as of now in terms of uh, referring military veterans and uh, managing them during this period. In terms of uh, service level agreements with provinces, specifically from Mr. Shalemba, and mainly example of uh, housing, we have not necessarily signed any uh, service level agreement with provinces in terms of housing. We are dealing mainly with the Department of Human Settlement at national level. And this is what has been the norm all along. It's the same with education support. But now with our understanding with this intergovernmental approach, we have realized that most of the services, even the education, uh, especially basic education, uh, the provinces have got a bigger role. So if we don't have a link up and exploit the, the service and system they have, we might not necessarily succeed. Therefore, we are working on that for the signing of those service level agreements. Unfortunately, we were ready to engage with Houghton, uh, Eastern Cape, Western Cape, and Free State. But with the advent of uh, COVID-19, we could not move forward. With the housing, we have not necessarily advanced on that one, but uh, it's at least uh, something we're looking at uh, in terms of engaging the province. Thank you, Chair.
thank you, General. Uh, any other question, colleague? Qu uh, question, colleague? Uh, any other question? Yes, Chair. Yes, uh, Mr. Mutle. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, I've got a few questions. Uh, on I think one on the first presentation, but let me start with the ones on APP presentation. Uh, particularly on uh, the transport benefit. I just want to find out uh, their plans. How are they intending to roll out uh, this uh, transport benefit? Uh, because seated where I'm seated, it seems going to be very complex. Uh, matter to, to to roll out because you need to engage department of transport and you know the dynamics in the transport uh, uh, industry uh, how are they intending to basically work uh, around the clock to ensure that uh, this benefit is effected uh, and they also spoke to, to employment opportunities uh, for, for military veterans. If they can clarify what kind of uh, opportunities are they referring to, because I've seen their target is around 20 or 30, if, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So their target is to basically employ 30 or 20 military veteran or what 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 exactly opportunities are they are they talking about and how are they going to go about that versus what they put the sa sa target uh, and also i want to also sponsor a view on their education support uh, benefit because they also uh, on the presentation, speak about the that as uh, one of their targets that they are going to implement. And uh, so the number is quite high. But uh, in our previous engagement, we have uh, noticed that uh, part of the challenges that uh, they need to address is that uh, you get military veterans uh, who wants to be supported uh, for their children who are still in high school or primary school, whilst we've got government schools uh, that should be used. And I think uh, they should start thinking in reviewing the support system, uh, the, the support benefit. They should look into that so that it becomes standardized. Uh, that uh, military veterans, children must be able to, to utilize government uh, public uh, uh, schools. And I know there are challenges, there will be imbalances there because some public school uh, are still, particularly in urban areas where they pay certain fees. But it's something that they can work around with the Department of uh, uh, Basic Education. And when it comes to higher education, there must be a standard uh, also uh, measure in terms of supporting uh, 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 students or, or, or beneficiaries who are uh, children of uh, military veteran. I think, uh, I think in that way, it will be standardized and we will not have the uh, challenges of uh, requests in uh, Goma to uh, from a veteran whose uh, kid is uh, in a private uh, uh, high school and uh, they require a huge amount and as compared to the one in Viane and the one in uh, in Nelspray. So it should be standardized. They, I think they should be looking at reviewing that. But on, on the lastly, Chair, on the on their strategic uh, document presentation, uh, we know the challenges that uh, the department is facing, and uh, uh, General Mukwege there made mention of uh, change management. 
as part of uh, mitigating risk. Uh, I am not sure whether what informs uh, them uh, articulating it or putting it as, as a risk uh, 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 mitigation. But seated where I'm seated, I think uh, uh, colleagues will agree. You, you, you need to change how you, you, you operate as DMV so that uh, you can be able to effectively and efficiently deliver uh, the services as uh, articulated in the, as the targets you have put for yourself. Because uh, quite frankly, you have not been able to achieve those targets uh, as set. Uh, in the previous uh, financial year, and uh, it it might be because of uh, several reasons, but uh, also what we have no, we have noticed is that uh, uh, without you implementing change management within your structure, you will not be able to achieve that which you you want to achieve, and uh, and callers will will tell you. Uh, there are quite a number of uh, uh, theories around change management. And uh, uh, I know for a fact that uh, when you look at Ted Lewis' uh, theory of change management, it tells you that you'll always have uh, forces that uh, support change and those that do, do not support change. And you would know better out of the, your structure and, and, and capabilities that you have. But uh, you know, resisting change is counter-revolutionary because change, revolution is change in its nature. Therefore, I think it is important that you you, you intensively uh, look at uh, not only as risk uh, mitigation, but as part of your strategic objection to ensure that you effect those changes in your structure so that uh, they be able to, you'll be able to deliver uh, the services as speedily as possible. Uh, I think, Chair, I'll pause there. Thank you very much. I think uh, Mr. Mutle has uh, covered the form very well. Uh, General, you have not reached an ideal situation, and you are far from reaching an ideal situation, I must say. Um, as, as, as it is now, you have a number of uh, targets uh, that uh, you know were not met. Uh, were not met. Maybe the, you have you have reasons why you have not met those targets. But from where I'm sitting, until you have addressed the systemic issues uh, in the department, you will not be able to achieve those targets. Uh, some of the issues you have mentioned yourself, the issue of um, you know uh, organizational structure that uh, uh, does not uh, fit the purpose. I mean, you have the structure that was approved in 2010, uh, even before the act, uh, the regulations and the policies uh, were approved. Uh, initially, your structure had 409 posts um, until uh, Treasury said, where do where, what is the justification for 409 posts? And those posts were reduced to 169 posts. And uh, so you can see the 409 was thumbsack, and even the treasury, uh, you know, determination of 169 posts was thumbsack. Uh, so you you that's that's a problem uh, you you are having, and you pointed out that uh, and until you have an, a, a proper organizational structure, uh, you know, you will not have, uh, you will not be able to achieve all the, the objectives that you have set for yourself. And number two is the stability in, in the leadership. I mean, when you have so many acting positions, it's a pity that the minister is not here because uh, the minister is the one who must account why, for instance, we still have not we still have not had uh, a permanent uh, SOD, you know, uh, Director General. We are acting and we have been acting for a very long time. And you, you can't account why you are acting. 
only the minister can uh, account why uh, <clears throat> this post uh, remains uh, vacant up to this point and is only filled an, on an acting basis. You also have a uh, second layer, uh, you know, uh, middle management uh, positions vacant. Uh, again, it, it's a problem that um, will actually, uh, you know, uh, cause the department not to achieve all what it, it seeks uh, to achieve. Um, <clears throat> so these are the uh, challenges uh, facing uh, the department uh, general. I, I, I really am giving you the budget with a, a heavy heart, you know. And number one, I know that you will not achieve everything that you set yourself to achieve, given the limitations. Until these limitations have been addressed, only then that you, you can, you know, come closer to being an ideal department that we want it to be. So you, you may then answer those questions. But the, my, my question, having said this, my question to you is your appeals board. Have you established the appeal? Has the minister established the appeals board? I'm asking this question because I, I get people writing to me as the chair of the committee, uh, appealing against the decisions that you make, uh, that the department makes. Like, for instance, when you turn down an application. And I wonder, if they come to me, do they know that there is an appeal, there is an appeal spot? There is, a, there, is an, there is an authority that they can appeal to? As, as, as who, who, is the, who are members of this board? And how often do they see it? How many cases have they received uh, since they were, they were appointed? I'm sure if you have that, the, the answer to the question, you may actually assist us. I'm raising this point because... Uh, you know, it's, it's part of, you know, uh, you know, it's integral part of the uh, an effective uh, and effic efficient uh, department. Uh, over to you, sir. Uh, chair. Yes, it's Mr. Mafanya. Chairperson. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mafanya. Thank you. Okay. Can I just please interject you a bit there, please? Yes, you may come in, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chairperson, yes, sir. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite unfortunate uh, that uh, the general cannot answer some of the questions that we sent. And the expectation is that we were ready to receive some answers now. Uh, and the minister is not here to answer for that, including the deputy minister. And, and, and now the level of incompetence on the part of the general in, in dealing with some of these questions cannot really do justice to some of the questions that we have. And I would propose that uh, th this meeting has been quite fruitless. I would propose that the minister or the deputy minister should attend some of this because already the questions have been sent prior to this meeting. And uh, the general says to us he hasn't seen them, he hasn't found them. And he cannot begin to interact with some of the things that, uh, that we have put forward a week before. Now, my proposal is that we have to wait for the minister or the deputy minister to deal with such uh, matters that are of critical nature to the DMV. Uh, that, that is, that's my proposal, because the reality will just uh, run in cycles instead of dealing with the matter decisively. Because now there is nothing that we hear from the general. Uh, it's just fancy footwork and fancy paperwork that is put forward to us. But the reality, the substance, the substance matter that we have to deal with, he cannot come up with such answers. Thank you. Right. Uh, no, thank you so much. I, I note that, uh, Mr. Mafanya, uh, can I listen to, can, can we discuss the point, colleagues, that uh, Mr. Mafanya is, is, is raising, um, uh, colleagues, as, as a substantive uh, point, uh, uh, whether we should uh, continue with, with the meeting or we adjourn it until when uh, the time when the minister is, is present, because there are questions that really can be best answered by by, by the minister uh, herself. And uh, any other colleagues, uh, any other comment, colleagues? Uh, Mr. Mutlen? Yes. Uh, well, the points uh, raised by uh, Honorable Mafanya, they are, they are correct. But uh, I don't think it will be fair on DMV to say 
let's shut everything down because there are questions that we ask that are directed to DMV and they must account on them. That that those ones that need ministers' attention can they be directed and will raise them uh, sharply with uh, the minister and the DM when they are here. Right. Thank you so much. Any other comment on this one? On this proposition? Yeah, I want to support the, the last comment. Uh, I mean, we know it's been coming for years, and there's been many reasons, amongst others, budgetary reasons and constraints for military veterans department. Uh, I think the uh, matters that are, all the matters that have been raised are very serious, are of big concern. Because as we have, as many have said, it's, it's repetitive of nature. Um, and we need to get to a point now that we get uh, answers to these questions. And I know that many of these matters are already coming from the previous uh, parliamentary term. So I support, um, you know, the fact that we, that we ask the minister and the deputy minister to come and account on those specific issues. Um, but that we, you know, extend our appreciation to the gen to, to, to the general for, for the work that he has done. Under extreme difficult situations, we know that he's supposed to be retired, and he's actually just helping out, which is um, which is fantastic by him of him. But it's not it's not helping us with this department going forward. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes, no, thank you so much. I, I agree. It should not, not be a reflection on the, on the general's uh, competence or, 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 or lack thereof. Uh, it, it, sh it shouldn't because it's, it's, it's given the job and has done everything possible. possible. And, uh, and we appreciate that he has been able to bring the department to where it is. But of course, there are questions that uh, cannot be answered by him, and that only that only that only the minister uh, or deputy minister can actually answer. So we leave those to the time when we have the meeting with the minister, and uh, let me now invite the general to deal with those that uh, he can deal with, you know, and uh, change management. Please talk to it, but. The difficulty is when you are acting yourself. You, you, are, you should be in retirement. You are called in to act in this department. Whether you can really, um, you know, effect change management uh, within the, the department. You know, one, two, whether you can introduce an organizational culture when in natural fact your, even your, 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 your days are numbered within the, the department. Uh, so that those remain questions that only the minister can, can deal with. Uh, again, I'm repeating that we will give this department uh, the budget, but with a heavy heart. And I'm, I, 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 I hope that we'll have time with the minister even before we go to parliament with our report. Uh, over to you, General. Thanks, uh, thanks Chair and honorable members. Uh, question from honorable... Uh, um, speaks to the transport benefits and how are we going to at least uh, deal with this complex as it is. In our engagement with the Department of Transport, they have indicated in terms of uh, the entities which they are subsidizing in terms of public transport uh, on three spheres in terms of railroad and air. And they were engaging them in terms of uh, being part of this project uh, going forward. And the issue which was mainly remaining was also an issue of how then do you have a identification card and a process and mechanism to make sure that those who travel are really military veterans. And an agreement between us and Department of Transport was to at least a benchmark in about uh, 200 in Gauteng, another 200 in KwaZulu Natal, and a possible 200 in the Western Cape. Uh, we were looking at those kind of uh, at least uh, provinces because of the infrastructure and uh, those who are subsidized by the Department of uh, Transport and see how does this one at least uh, rolls up. So that was the understanding, still the understanding uh, going forward with the Department of Transport. So 
For now, all with the Department of Transport guided and working very closely with the uh, subsidized entities and some of the stakeholders. That's where then the whole uh, methodology of implementing this will come through. In terms of uh, the question of uh, the figure of uh, employment, which speaks to job placement, I will give it to uh, DDG Mafu just to indicate why the figure looks the way it does. And uh, there is at least a uh, logic behind that, Ms. Mafu. Thank you, uh, DG. Honorable members, uh, good morning. The target is being set at 20 for job placement. It is a new indicator. Uh, we are not um, yet uh, ready to, to launch it, but uh, I want to indicate that we are in a discussion with Hanset, one of the uh, defense industries. Uh, they've asked from us um, students whom we have given bursary and who have done engineering associated uh, qualification. So we've given them a 60. Now, unfortunately for us, um, their scorecard talks to military veterans, not their dependents. But we are in the process of talking to the ministry so that that can be amended, so that also uh, they can benefit in terms of their scorecard even when they provide intubation for dependents of military veterans. Uh, we take uh, this indicator very seriously uh, in that money is being spent to capacitate military veterans as well as their dependents. And the ideal situation is for them not to go and join unemployment um, uh, citizens. So we are aggressively looking for opportunities for them so that it's either they go through empowerment and start their own business as long as they're going to be sustainable or they then go for job placement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mafu. On the question of uh, education, we have dealt with the issue of uh, a public learning institution, both at basic and tertiary level, and the issue of uh, private uh, education private uh, institutions. Now, discussing in terms of the policy and the practice presently that we are looking at thus, we have been directed that we engage the Department of Higher Education, in terms of tertiary education, Department of Higher Education and Training, and where the emphasis is more in terms of the policy guidelines from uh, Department of Higher Education and Training, the emphasis is more on public learning institutions more than the private, but us as a department, we are funding both. And now the policy must then begin at least uh, to promote public uh, learning institutions. And this is what we are working on in terms of our uh, pol education policy. And also we have been referring our students to NSFAS, and what has come true is that NSFAS would, was able to take some of them on board, but some of them do not necessarily qualify based on the NSFAS criteria, one of those being the question of age, one of those being the level of performance, and uh, of course, their uh, income. Now, that lot, because they are continuing, we have taken them on board to make sure that they might not qualify within NSFAS but as a DMV, since we've been going and supporting them as continuing students, we'll support with them. So we accept that the issue of education policy and those who we assist and how do our policies uh, at least are aligned with the national uh, education policy, both at basic and higher education. We are working on that in terms of our MOUs. And also in terms of following up, the question of progress and being able to get progress reports right through the year, especially at basic education. We have engaged the amount of basic education. They have shown us their system and we have agreed that this is doable. So we were looking at that for engaging now from their side, directed by them being at national to the provinces. This is why we're talking to the service level agreement with the provincial departments of basic education 
where they've agreed how to support us to track the development of the students, whether they're in class and they are at least uh, performing or not performing, so that we can make at least an informed decision. But we accept the guidance uh, given in terms of education support by uh, Honorable Muntle on this one. Chair, in terms of uh, change management, I think uh, Honorable Muntle has indicated uh, in terms of theory, and not only theory and in practice, that it is quite clear in terms of comparative studies that organizations which do perform and perform at high level are the ones who understand and implement the change management, which is a continuous process. And therefore, as a department, we know where we are and the level we're operating in. And we felt that we need to factor in this. This is why then it becomes it is, uh, visible. Uh, the, the chair, the question which speaks to strategic leadership, taking what then uh, as, uh, we understand by change management and why it is critical. We accept, uh, especially from where I'm seated, that without the hand of any organization being there, and with his team at a senior level, putting up at least a vision for that organization and a value system, and then making sure that the mission is understood by all. Uh, it is not that easy to get and achieve that mission. And in a temporary arrangement, which now the department finds itself in, in terms of strategic leadership, uh, I don't want to call it a bridge too far, uh, but we are at least uh, striving to get there with those who are here. Yes, we are at least uh, making the point that the minister also is aware, she understands uh, the dynamics, and I would say, unfortunately, uh, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, office of the minister, the public service administration with the reconfiguration of government, there's been a, a lull in terms of filling the senior post, but now that has been lifted and the minister is looking at that, but when that time comes and uh, she's available, I think she'll be at least be able to articulate. But for change management to succeed, you need strategic leadership and it must be stable. But without that change management, which is a continuous thing, it becomes difficult for organization to achieve at the level it's expected to achieve. I will uh, leave it at that uh, in terms of change management and strategic leadership with all what it takes, except to say, Part of, the, <clears throat> part of the challenges which we are uh, faced with, we accept that the point of military veteran is a very diverse uh, in terms of composition, where you would find other people, although they are uh, officials in the department, they are also veterans themselves. And also you find people who probably understand very little about the community they are serving in terms of the military veterans. So also the induction of people when they come in so that they can understand the organization in terms of uh, human resource development of the organization, that is uh, critical uh, going forward. Uh, then uh, in terms of the <clears throat> issue of the organizational structure, Chair, we thought by this time we would have finished with that. And uh, we've been engaging the Department of uh, Public Service Administration. And unfortunately, uh, at the end of the uh, 2019, they had a, a change leadership. As we're engaging them to finalize the structure early this year, then again, they, we all got uh, caught up with the issue of uh, COVID. But now we have level four, we have resuscitated that because it is critical that without that, it's going to be is, uh, not easy to do what is expected of us because that's where you begin to put up people in a, at least a, an organizational structure which speaks to the act, the mandate, the service delivery model. But we accept uh, that this is uh, critical going forward. The appeal spot uh, was put in place uh, about five years ago. Uh, it's got uh, its a uh, membership, and the chair of the uh, appeals board is Mr. Mabuson Simon. So probably, if then the other issues which uh, honourable chair has raised, what kind of cases and what happens 
and uh, what is their experience with the department, it might be advisable that probably he is uh, requested to at least have a session with the uh, committee, and then he can explain himself and his experience in terms of uh, whether people are coming in and uh, making their appeal there. But for us, we are able to say, yes, the military veterans, some of them are using that uh, body. And uh, of course, we do engage. There might be challenges in terms of how we move forward, but I think uh, those are manageable. Thanks, Chair, in terms of uh, the question which has been raised. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, colleagues, uh, can we, General, uh, you said um, uh, the, the policies that are outstanding is uh, transport policy. Uh, can we just revisit those policies? Uh, which other policies, uh, General? The main policy, which are new, are going to be new policies because those benefits have been sitting there, but we didn't have developed any policies uh, to that effect. Uh, it's mainly the issue of uh, public uh, subsidization of public transport, and also it was speaking to the pension uh, uh, benefit. So those are the new policies we're talking to. At, at what stage are they? Uh, is it possible that we'll have these uh, finalized before the end of this financial year? This is what we're banging on in terms of the level of uh, the draft and the consultation with the sister departments. But now with advent of COVID, and uh, we're not quite sure whether we'll be able at least to get traction in terms of uh, the activities of those uh, other government parts. But uh, we, have not changed, we have not changed our target in terms of the end of the financial year. Not yet. Uh, no, it's fine. No, no. Uh, th th thank you so much. Um, I think that is okay. Yes, Mr. Mutley? Are you saying yes. something? Yes. I don't think uh, the, the one of the question that I raised was uh, answered uh, at this uh, King Liso, uh, on uh, the, the new target of uh, employment of uh, military veterans. Uh, with the number of 20. Uh, because the response is saying we will look at uh, uh, beneficiaries of military veterans, but the target does not talk about beneficiaries. Now, it, it is correct that you put a target there and you don't know how you are going to achieve it. Uh, it's like waking up uh, one day, General Mukwege, and you send your son to step in for you uh, because uh, he's your son or he's your or your daughter. It can be correct. When you put a target to say we are going to uh, employ uh, or empower 20 military veterans, you must be knowing how you are going to do it because you are, you are supposed to achieve that target within... Uh, a financial year within first month. Therefore, you can't be uh, telling us that uh, we are going to look for internship for their for their spouse, so forth and so on. Can we get clarity? How are you going to implement that particular? What what are your plans uh, in terms of imp why did you put it there in the first place? That particular target, if you don't know what uh, how you are going to implement it. Thank you. Over, over, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mutla. Over to General. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, General, over to you. You'll indicate who will deal with the question if it is not going to be dealt, dealt by yourself. Thank yeah. you, Honorable Chair. Hello, who's that? Chair. Ch 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 Ms. Ms. Muller. Ms. Pierkes. Oh, Ms. Pierkes. Okay. Yes. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Chair. Chair, uh, before the general respond, maybe just on the the one of the skills that they have uh, as military veterans, uh, do they have a plan in place to popularize the and promote the skills of the military veterans? And then just on, um, I think, Chair, what we must uh, remember is that nothing will be the same now. So, um, 
how can they, for example, uh, or do they have a plan in place to promote or have a roadshow to train and, and induct the, the children in the school to promote the liberation history in schools? And um, the erection of memorial sites, especially now with the pandem pandemic, uh, maybe to cater for future opportunities for the youth, for example, to establish heritage routes. How can they be agents of change to make a difference, especially in assisting the youth to be part of building the economy after this pandemic? Check. Thank you, Chair. Yes, thank, thank you so much. All right, uh, General, over to you. Thanks, Ms. Speakers. Thanks, Chair. Uh, uh, Honorable Mut, uh, in terms of the indicator where we are talking about uh, providing employment opportunities, what is quite clear as a department, we were looking at mainly educating and skilling in the past, not necessarily following and taking through those who are skilled and educated in terms of job placement. So we have realized that gap. And then we said, okay, how then do we make sure that we are going to have this taken on board? Because to train and skill them, but not have them placed anywhere in terms of job is not really the actual purpose and intent. The intent is to have them working. And hence, therefore, we said, we do not necessarily have experience in this field because it speaks to profiling those individuals and get to know also in the uh, employment and labor environment, both in public and private, how can we place them uh, in terms of that? And then we were going to use this financial year to be able to establish those practices and then enhance them going forward. Now, speaking to the COVID and also as an opportunity, it is quite interesting to then realize uh, in terms of what at provincial level is happening, where we get at least and now that we're engaging, as an example, the Gauteng uh, government talking about township economy and talking about what they have, which is called uh, CEPO 1 million, and also talking about what they refer to as care economy, which they are spending as uh, housing government, Department of Social Development, on a yearly basis, about 2.3 billion, which speaks to more on NPOs and uh, NGOs. They are indicating to us that it looks like we have empowered military veterans, they've got their own co-ops, but when then they must operate, they are not in a position to do that. Therefore, in engaging the provincial government, in the programs they have, we see an opportunity there that this is doable going forward, uh, Chair. I will make that a, a submission in terms of this, but we do not necessarily have an experience, but we've got an idea that it's not us, but it's us with the provincial governments where this is happening, where they can take us uh, forward, uh, Chair. Thank you. In terms, yes, sir. Well, I was saying uh, you have not answered uh, the questions that um, uh, Ms. Peters posed. May you please go to them? In terms of uh, the skills of military veterans and it is, uh, making sure that we popularize those, the idea is mainly military veterans at a particular level will be speaking more on the security and protection services. But some of them are operating at a different level. Challenge is we as a department, again, we have not necessarily profound military veterans to at least a good extent, but we have engaged uh, the military veterans and we are engaging them now in terms of trying to profile in terms of the skill sets they have, including the business interests where they find themselves in, but not necessarily operating. So we are looking at 
uh, at least are working with them very closely so that we can be able to have a sense of what is it that they can do and then be able in terms of social coercion to make sure how then in, within their communities they can play a role. So we are looking at that check. And of course, working with the National Skills Fund and working with the Fund of Human Settlement in terms of artisans and the areas where South Africa is in need of artisans, artisans trained people. Thank you. In terms of uh, liberation, um, history, uh, schools and heritage rules, I'll give to uh, TDG Empowerment and uh, Stakeholder Management, Mrs. Marco, uh, to take that one, Ms. Marco. Um, there is an established uh, heritage groups. You will understand, um, honorable members, that historically the budget uh, for heritage is sitting with the Department of Art and Culture. There is an established interministerial committee which is chaired by uh, the minister from uh, DAC and our ministry is also participating in that. In each province, there are three sites that are currently operational uh, that look at um, the liberation route. So it is um, an established and an ongoing um, activity. DMV provides um, content in terms of um, those liberation routes, but in terms of funding, it comes mainly from DAC. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Colleagues, I think that that answers uh, all the questions. Um, I, is there any outstanding question before I move off the, the questions? Any pending question? All right. It doesn't look like there is any more uh, questions to, to 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 answer. General, th thank you, thank you very much uh, for the the, the presentation uh, today. Um, um, I think you have answered all the questions uh, satisfactorily, satisfactorily, except those questions that um, we. We forwarded to you in writing, uh, to which we expected um, <clears throat> uh, written responses, uh, written replies. We have not received those replies. Uh, you are not to blame for that, uh, because uh, we sent the questions uh, via the, the, the ministry, uh, the office of the minister. I think they will have to answer why you did not receive the questions. We can't blame you for, for not receiving the questions. We don't send them directly to either yourself or the SACDEF. We send them via the ministry, uh, you know, uh, the PLO uh, in, in Cape Town, who then takes it to the minister, and then it gets distributed uh, from the office of the minister to the relevant um, um, you know, persons. Uh, in the department or departments, or including the public entities. So <clears throat> for, for, for that, we will not blame you. Uh, and, and then two, there are questions that surely you cannot, uh, you know, provide satisfactory answer, answers on. Um, you know, uh, one on the acting positions. Only the minister, like we said, uh, can um, you know give us um, you know information when will this problem of uh, you know positions not being filled uh, gonna be addressed. You can't have an organisation uh, strategic in this one having so many uh, positions uh, vacant and only to be filled uh, in uh, acting capacities. You know, so it's, it's, it, that creates um, instability at the level of uh, strategic management. And um, so, I mean, we, we're now called upon to entrust our budget into the hands of those people. Um, so it's, it's certainly not a good thing. And the number two, we mentioned that um, 
uh, you said it yourself, the organizational structure uh, is not aligned to service delivery. Uh, that is supported by the fact that the structure was developed, um, you know, ahead of, uh, you know, uh, the act regulations and, and other policies. That is about 10 years ago. Ideally, the structure should have been reviewed and, uh, and, and, uh, and approved uh, by now. So that that has not happened uh, is really regretted. And only the minister can deal with that uh, question. Uh, <clears throat> two, uh, aligned to that is the very point that Tabo Mutla raised, Honorable Mutla raised, on change management and, um, and, and the organization's culture, as, as, as it were. All of these two questions are linked to a, 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 a sound uh, and effective uh, organization structure being put in place. And uh, so we will not achieve all of this until that has happened. And uh, that includes uh, the filling of vacancies. If you fill the vacancies now, you will actually be putting the cart before the horse because some of those uh, uh, positions may have to be evaluated and graded and so that you determine the suitability uh, to, those, uh, to those posts. And until that has happened, you anything you do now would be in 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 fact uh, not helping to address the systemic problem uh, as it is with, within the department and the last point uh, which has really been uh, with us for a very long time i think for the past four years is the issue of a credible database very central uh, to the department I used to say that it's like a population register uh, to the country. Uh, you see, you, you can't, the country can't function without a population, a credible population register. The department can't function, uh, this department can't function without a, a, a credible uh, a database because it then gives you who your, 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 your clients, your clients are. And as you have that, then you keep on not uh, you keep on missing your own targets. And then the last thing are the policies, those that are very critical to the functioning of 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 of, of the department and the effective and efficient delivery of services that are still outstanding. One is a is a public transport policy. We know that the veterans out there are really struggling. Uh, this was this benefit was promised to them, and uh, and 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 as far as we are concerned, it has still not been uh, delivered, and it remains an, an an issue of concern to us. The pension benefit, uh, I know for a fact that those who were uh, in the statutory forces uh, have no problem with this because they retired uh, with their pension benefits. And, and also those uh, from the non-statutory forces who were absorbed and became part of the new uh, SNDF and then retired have no problem with the pension benefits. Those who are facing a serious problem are those who, um, uh, you know, uh, were demobilized but qualify to receive uh, these uh, benefits, but they're not receiving them. So, uh, and they remain out and, 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 and about. And the last point is the medical, uh, you know, the healthcare uh, benefit. Not all of them uh, receive the healthcare benefit. And some, we know, we know some of the, the what you call the military veterans who are in need of the service, but due to there being no uh, clarity in terms of uh, your service level agreement with, uh, you know, uh, other, uh, you know, uh, uh, service health uh, care um, uh, delivery uh, uh, services uh, agents in, in the provinces, they fall through the cracks. Uh, I mean, there is, uh, there are military hospitals, but the footprint of those military hospitals are not throughout the country. You find one in Cape Town, one in Pretoria, 
and uh, another one in, in Bloemfontein. And uh, we have none in other provinces. And you can't expect people to be moved from the, wherever they are to Bloemfontein, Pretoria, or, or Cape Town, uh, a sick person. We expect that that thing be clarified as quickly as possible so that uh, those who are in need of this, uh, of healthcare, are not uh, left uh, behind. I thought I should say these things, but these are matters that we, we need to have a, a serious discussion um, on when the minister is, is around, because you, 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 you can tell us uh, up to a point, but the rest has to be, uh, you know, uh, we, we need commitment right now up to, from the higher level of the department as to what is going to happen with this. And the last thing, colleagues, is to have to 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 invite to have a meeting with the appeals board, and um, just to get uh, they should an appeals board is like some uh, oversight over the department, uh, not oversight in a way, but uh, people appeal to it where how I mean how they see uh, these appeals and um, whether the decisions of the department are uh, in in a way. Um, uh, sensitive to the need of uh, those who should actually be receiving uh, a benefit, but only them can give us information. Whether those people who come to you, they come to you with frivolous uh, request or requests that are outside the law, uh, what is the rate of the, 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 these uh, ap ap applications being upheld by, by, by them? So, but we will have a discussion uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Vusom Simang, uh, who is the head of, of the appeals, to take us through uh, on that, so that we have a comprehensive uh, uh, understanding as to the extent to which we are, you know, um, you know, uh, dealing with the issues of the military veterans, as it were. Colleagues, we have. Uh, uh, gone beyond our time by our time by ten minutes on this uh, on this item, and uh, I would now want us to move to the next item. That's the budget report for DOMV. Okay. If you agree with me, we then release the department. Over to you before I release the department. Uh, I'm sorry, I did not want to interject you, but uh, I want to to just advise uh, General Muko to really look at those targets if uh, the responses that they gave, uh, they were honestly given. CPI 303 talks of military veterans and their dependents, which is clear, and it makes life of Auditor General simple. But the new target will not make it any easier for them, and the intention chair is to assist them they must go and revisit. If it is meant for dependent, the target must be very clear. PPI 305, it does not say military veterans and their dependents. Maybe they must just revisit, revisit it and craft it correctly so that it suits what they want to achieve. So it is my humble submission. I don't want to, to further uh, make a debate between uh, myself and, and their understanding, but they must simplify it in the manner that all of us will understand. Even the AG, uh, for that matter, will not have queries around that. Yeah. No, no, I, I take note of that, uh, uh, Mr. Mutle. We will uh, reflect on, on that uh, item in, in the report so that we are then able to follow it up, um, you know, uh, uh, when we do the in year monitoring. Uh, on the performance of the department. Uh, with that, uh, General, you may want to give us your closing remarks uh, before you take leave. Uh, on behalf of the department, uh, allow me to say uh, thank you again. We are, we've taken note of the concerns raised and guidelines given. And uh, also, we are appreciative at least, uh, of the uh, direction given. Uh, going back, we will be looking at uh, some of the issues which have just been raised, making sure that uh, we respond uh, appropriately. And apologies again, lastly, for the 
at least uh, inability to respond to the question which was sent to us. But the rest, we wish you all the best uh, with your team uh, for the better part of the day. Thank you very much. Yes, before you leave, General, how soon can you respond to them uh, so that um, we don't miss uh, uh, the discussion on them when we finalize our report? We want to finalize our report by next week. Uh, so can we get uh, your replies by Tuesday or Wednesday? Wednesday is doable, Chair. They will be there. Wednesday is doable. No, thank you, thank you so much, General. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, working with you. And uh, please continue doing your, your good work. And uh, we know the limitations under which you operate, but we will uh, try to help resolve some of them. And with that, I now release you, General. We may then uh, move. Uh, you can just, just press your... Uh, your, your you may leave the, the, the meeting general uh, whilst we continue with the other, uh, the last item on the agenda. Colleagues, what, what is on the agenda, um, which is our last item, is the budget report. Uh, I, I wanted to take the budget report as read. Um, and, and yes, you, 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 you want to uh, ask the uh, Peter, uh, uh, Peter, are you in the meeting? Peter Daniels, are you in the meeting? Good morning. Yes, Chair, I'm here. And, uh, and uh, is Velem, uh, Dr. Velem uh, van Jans van Rensberg in the meeting? Yes, Chair, I'm, I'm present. Yeah, present. All right. We, we are now dealing with the last incoming item. This is the budget report. Um, would you want to talk to it a bit uh, before I welcome uh, comments from the from the colleagues? Uh, Chair, do you want me to briefly discuss the recommendations? Yes, please. Uh, um, the report that focus us on the things that you need to focus on. Uh, I know that the rest in the report is, is you know, the, the, is what is already uh, in the strategy plans or strategy, strategy documents of, of, the, of, the, of the department and the public entities. So we can't change those. Uh, you just tell, take us to what uh, you want to draw our attention to so that we focus on those and then put them out of our way. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll upload uh, the report. Just, to, to, just tell us the structure of the report and then you zoom in on the areas that you, you, you invite uh, our attention to. Uh, Chair, um, I'm hope it's uploaded. Yes, can I can everybody see. see the report? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, um, Chair, this is the budget report, the draft budget report. As one can know, it was dated, was supposed to be considered and adopted at the 10th of July, so we'll just have to change that. Uh, Chair, I think the important thing is the observations and the recommendations um, that we've done. Um, so, if you don't mind, Chair, I'll go to uh, page 22. Uh, just uh, those are the recommendations on the Department of Defense. Just before you do that, just present the structure first. Run through the structure of the report. Um, with regards to the structure of the report, sir, um, what we've done is, uh, and as we presented to, to the committee the last time, is that we looked at the strategic plan, the annual performance plan, and the budget, firstly, of the Department of uh, Defense. Um, and then, secondly, we looked at uh, arm score, and then we also uh, looked um, at the, the Castle Control Board. I think I've got the wrong presentation, Chair. You think so? Please correct that.
Uh, just give me a moment, yeah. I just want to upload the correct uh, presentation. Okay. Yeah, there so you can see it's uh, 30, later 13 May, we just changed uh, that date. Um, so, Chair, if we can uh, go to page uh, 22, there one will find the observations that the committee has made. So, firstly, we'll discuss the Department of Defense, and then we'll go over to the Castle Control Board, and after that, Chair, we'll just conclude with uh, the observations and recommendations with regards to um, I've still got a wrong report here. You still have got the wrong report. Are you winning? I'm getting the chair. Well, Alan, do we have the latest report? I seem to struggle to get it. I do. I can uh, share. It's the one that Brian shared with the committee members as well. So if you wish, I can share it. Yeah, just open up. Because I'm starting to get the right report. All right. Is it is it visible there? Not yet, uh, William. I can only see a W here, which I suppose stands for your for your name. Let me just try again to share again. There's a question from Sharon. Can I be of assistance with the presentation? Um, um, well, yeah. just give me a chance. Yes, is the shared, is the shared screen, um, uh, is it working now or are you still only seeing a W? If so, please email it to me. Are you okay now? Is that the uh, report? Can you see the report here? Yes, I can see it now. It's clearly. Okay. Valero, can I take over? Yes, uh, you can go ahead. Thanks, Peter. Can you can you see the report then? Yes. The first page see. there. The draft report dated 13 May. Um, Chair, um, there on page uh, 23. Onwards, um, page 24, there are just some of the observations um, that the committee members have made. Um, but I think for the interest of time, um, is it okay if I just go to the recommendations, Chair? Yes. Now just go to the, to the observations uh, and then recommendations. We still have a bit of time. Yeah. Chair, yeah. as we say there, during the deliberations on 5 May, Several observations uh, were made regards to the budget allocation, the performance indicators, and the targets. Um, and the first one is that the committee has actually expressed its gratitude for the ongoing efforts of the SANF to combat the spread of the pandemic. But we also urge then senior members to ensure that soldiers remain well protected in the execution of the task. Um, the second one, Chair. Um, relates to the need to consider the long-term performance of the DOD, specifically given the many concerns 
raised by institutions like the Defence Force Service Commission. I think that issue was raised by General Olomisa, and we were cautioned not to talk about grievances, but rather to talk about the findings of and recommendations of the conditions of service with regards to the Defence Force Service Commission. Third one day, uh, members just reiterated the need for the DNT to ensure that it maximizes the reimbursements from the United Nations for its participation in peacekeeping operations in DRC. And similarly, the committee wanted to know, you know, are the, com are the department actually reimbursed, you know, if they assist other departments like, for instance, in the Val River. The next one is that the committee welcomed the announcement of additional funds that have been located to boost the technological means for border security. However, the committee remains concerned about the ongoing challenges to optimally safeguard our borders. The next one, Chair, relates to Project Hoofeister and Biro. Um, the committee was concerned about the statements that have been made that indicated that um, these projects are likely to run into financial difficulties in the medium term. The next one is just concerns with regards to the plausibility of fully implementing milestone one of the 2015 defense review over the medium term, given the ongoing financial and related constraints. Uh, the next item, Chair, relates to the DOD. Um, the committee, they just welcomed the initiative of the DOD to utilize the defense work work formation as a generator for cost savings. Um, the next one relates to the ministerial initiative to sweat assets as a means of raising additional funds for the SNF. And it's noted that this process will be headed by the chief of logistics, but caution that this process should actually be open for checks and balances. The next one, Chair, is the committee once again urges the DOD to engage National Treasury to find ways to avoid the irregular expenditure under compensation of employees. And this specifically aims the background of the rejuvenation plan that the DO is expected to share with National Treasury. And we also say the Chair, the Department should report on progress in this regard on a quarterly basis. The next one relates to the higher cost with regards to the ministry, um, and that is for issues such as the, the car chartering of uh, aircraft um, and also the presidential medical unit that falls under this program. But still, the committee then urges the Department to actually find ways to ensure that the cost in this sub-program is actually minimized. The next one, Chair, relates to the members raising concerns around the continuous funding difficulties and the impact that this will have on the mid-life upgrades of essential equipment, including the primary SA Navy and SAA aircraft platform, given the financial difficulties of the department. Chair, with regards to our recommendations, and this relates closely and follow the sequence of the observations. Um, the first one is there that the committee urges the, the DOD to ensure that all SNDF personnel deployed they, to assist other state departments in the fight against COVID-19. They must be well prepared and issued with the relevant protective gear. The committee further urges that the department should ensure that regular screening and testing of its members occur to prevent the spread of the pandemic within the armed forces itself. The second one related to the Defense Force Service Commission, we're just saying that we are going to schedule a meeting with the Defense Force Service Commission on the recurring findings and conditions of soldiers and the DOD should then also give us a report on the progress with the implementation of the outstanding recommendations. Um, the next one, Chair, is that the department is urged to maximize its reimbursement from the United Nations for the participation in peacekeeping regarding the availability and the serviceability <laughs> of especially prime mission uh, equipment. Further, the department should also include in the quarterly report the percentage of reimbursements received from the UN relevant to the expected reimbursement. The next one, Chair, is that the Department should include in its annual report 
a list of areas in which it assisted other government departments, what the expenditure was in this regard, and whether reimbursement for such assistance was received. The next one, the committee requests that the DOD must update it on a quarterly basis on the progress regarding the implementation of technological means to boost border safeguarding. Quarterly progress on the spending of the 225 million allocated by national territory for this purpose should also be provided. And then the committee also undertook to continuously engage the DOD on progress regarding projects Woofaster, Viro, and Hotel. The next one, Chair, the committee recommends that the DOD should on a regular basis share with it progress made with the implementation of Milestone 1 of the 2015 Defense Review and the challenges in this regard. The next one, the committee is encouraged, or the department is encouraged, to fast track the utilization of the Defense for Works Formation as a cost saving mechanism. The committee recommends that the, the DOD should provide feedback on the devolution of certain responsibilities from the Department of Public Works to the DOD. Projects and related savings should be reported in the DOD annual report. The next one, the committee also encourages the department to fast track the sweating of assets to ensure maximum benefit for the SNDF. In this regard, the DOD should share with the committee its detailed plans once completed for the sweating of assets. The second last one, the committee once again urges the DOD to engage national treasury to find ways to avoid the regular expenditure and compensation of employees against the background of the rejuvenation plan that the DOD is expected to share with national treasury. The department should report on progress in this regard on a quarterly basis. And then the last one, Chair, um, is just saying that we take note of the reasons for the high cost of the, uh, uh, the ministry sub-program, but the DOD should then take care to ensure that they diminish or decrease some of the spending with this uh, program. Chair, that is the observations and the recommendations with regards to the DOD. Um, are you going to allow, allow now for an opportunity for input, or so I go on to the to entities? Yes, go to entities, please. Chair, I think it's around page 37. Uh, page 39, there are just some of the observations with regards to the castle control board when we engage them on the 6th of, of, of May, uh, so 6th of May 2020, uh, where also several observations were made. Um, Chair, the first one there, it is that the committee took note um, of the CCB's views that is currently a situation of business extraordinary unusual because of the COVID pandemic and even went so far as to state that it's become a matter of life and death. The committee therefore asked the CCB to explain some of the measures it has taken to take the CCB forward. Second one, members are inquired around the assistance that the CCB is giving to qualifying employees to assist the UIF. The third one, the committee inquired around plans of the CCB if National Treasury does not approve the 1.6 million funding request that the CCB has applied for. The committee also expressed, um, sorry, Chair, I just want to check. Uh, the Mercy Committee also expressed its concern whether this amount will be sufficient for, um, to address the COVID 19 impact on the operational uh, activities on the committee over a longer period. The last one there, last observation, the members just inquired around the going concern status of the CCB. With regards to the four recommendations, Chair, the first one is that the committee noted the extraordinary circumstances under which the CCB is operating and expresses appreciation for the efforts to manage a very difficult situation. Some of the measures taken by the CCB include senior management not being paid for April 2020, and that they applied for a 1.6 million relief support package through the DUD from National Treasury. However, given that the request was submitted before the lockdown and the projection was until, uh, until 
August 2020, the committee believes that an additional 1.7 million would be required. The second one, the committee appreciated that the CCB could pay its employees their full salaries in March 2020. Their lower end employees received 70% of their salaries in April 20, and they assisted them to access the UIF for the remaining 30% and the maximum amount going forward. To this extent, the CCPC completed the memorandum of agreement with the UIF regarding claims by the employees from April 2020 onwards. The MITI also agreed that it will engage the Minister and especially the 1.7 relief package and future assistance, financial assistance to the CCB. The last one, Chair, the committee then Committee in, the CCB informed the committee that they ceased operations in mid-2020 and that subsequently all revenue has stopped given that they are reliant on visitors and businesses to utilize the facilities. While noting the CCB's response that it can only generate revenue and switch assets outside once the castle is open to visitors and businesses, the committee encouraged the CCB to explore other avenues to generate income to prevent having to lay off employees. Um, if I can go to the last part, Chair. Yes. The recommendations and observations with regards to I'm Castle, sure. to the arms score. Arms score, yeah. The, on page 48, Chair, the first one is the committee noted the important role of arms score in terms of its research and development capability and assisting South Africa during the COVID-19 pandemic. This includes ArmScore's involvement in domestic development and manufacturing of ventilators, the testing of protective equipment by uh, pro-technic laboratories, and the conducting of COVID-19 tests. Second one, members expressed concern around the ongoing delays to Project Ufaista. Similar concerns was raised as to the potential delays that may emerge in Project Biro due to limited funding availab availability. The third one, Members expressed concern around the possible duplication of functions between Arms Corps and the CSR, but were satisfied with the explanation that defense-related research and development were directed by the Department on the Defense Board on Research and Development, which prevents duplication. The committee also welcomed Arms Corps' outreach programs to schools nationwide, but requested that this be extended to more rural schools. Lastly, the committee noted that given the difficult financial times that lie ahead, continued austerity measures should be put in place. Chair, in conclusion, the recommendation with regards to Arms Corps, the first one is that the committee welcomes Arms Corps' support to the state efforts to curb COVID-19 and urges the entity to continue to support such endeavors. Secondly, Arms Corps is encouraged to provide its services to other state departments during the COVID-19 pandemic with the potential to translate this into long-term support in a post-COVID-19 landscape. Thirdly, the committee remains concerned around the status of projects Ufeste, Biro, and potentially Hotel. Armscore is requested to provide the committee with a breakdown of milestones in each of these projects, while milestones were achieved, which milestones were achieved, which milestones are set to be achieved in the medium to long-term, including the projected achievement dates and the funds required for each milestone. It should also be indicated whether these funds have been earmarked from within the special defense account or whether it is still to be appropriated. This information should be provided to the committee before 15 June 2020 and will inform further engagement between the committee, Arms Corps and the DUD. The second last one, the committee encourages Arms Corps to expand the number of rural schools to which it conducts outreach programs and to report on these in the annual 2020-21 annual report. Lastly, Chair, given expected economic constraints over the medium term, the committee encouraged Arms Corps to maintain austerity measures and to find additional means of one, costing, and two, increasing the revenue generation. The committee also encouraged the board to take into account difficult financial climate when considering performance bonuses and similar expenses. The long-term viability of arms score amid challenging economic circumstances should be foremost in future planning. Thank you, Chair.
Thank you so much. Uh, colleagues, that then takes into account uh, the issues that uh, were captured uh, in our two uh, meetings. The first meeting with the DOD, and then the second meeting with the two entities. I've since supplied the minutes of those meetings to support the discussion uh, on the report. May I now invite uh, comments? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, Kubas Murray speaking. Chairperson, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. You may, may uh, talk. I don't know why why my screen is now gone. Um, but just on uh, just one or two observations that I've just seen in the report that is not affecting the uh, of the, the recommendations. On uh, page six of the uh, department's report, um, it refers to legal, um, basically legal compliance. Uh, I was just wondering whether we should have, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you, but there is noise. I don't know where it's coming from. Can yeah. other people mute, mute their, uh, what you call their, their mics? I think they've okay. all muted their mics. Over to uh, Mr. Maru. Just on page six um, of, of the report, it refers to legal uh, uh, compliance um, in terms of international law. It doesn't refer anything to compliance with UN uh, regulations. And I was just wondering whether we should add that or is it not appropriate to add that? Because we are bind by the um, UN regulations and resolutions with regards to defence, that was the first point. That is on, on, on page six, eh? On page six, yeah. Of the report. So okay. there, there's a there's a specific uh, bullet legal adherence to international law, uh, okay. and I was just wondering whether we should not put that in because that is we know that we are we are compliant on that, and then on page eight. Um, I have just um, seen under the Minister of Defence focus areas, um, the second one from the bottom, maintain prime mission equipment at a set level. However, there are nowhere an explanation or, or, or uh, you know, an, an information in terms of what does it mean a set level. You know, it can mean um, hypothetically anything. If there's somewhere a qualification, then we know, we know, as well as the minister knows in terms of her commitment to us and feedback to us. That was the, that was the one. And then on, on arms score, um, on page 49, it refers to the HR cost. Um, how, we know that the HR cost is currently about 78% of their total budget. Although we refer to austerity measures and bonuses, um, but other than what we are saying to the department to, to come back with regards to HR cost, we don't put such an obligation on arms corps. And I was just wondering whether, especially in the current circumstances, whether arms corps must also come back and, and, and give us an indication on whether they can cut um, uh, HR cost, and if so, how and what will the practical implications be? And then the last one, sir, and that links also to our recommendations. We are referring to uh, Arms Corps with regards to feedback on the project, but we do not refer anywhere with regards to the dockyard. And, and I know that we have visited uh, Simonstown, and we are all aware of the enormous challenges with regards to the dockyard but there's nothing in this report uh, or our recommendations with regards to feedback uh, on the progress and the challenges with regards to the dockyard project. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mare. Any other? I hope uh, uh, Peter and Ben are putting the questions and the comments. Uh, yes, uh, Jeremy. Jeremy I've noted the questions and the remarks. Any other comment? Uh, I have a, a comment uh, on the uh, under CCB. 
um, and the observation, uh, uh, Peter and, and Velem, I think is the last part one observation. Um, the second from the bottom, where we say the committee welcomed uh, AMSCO's outreach program of uh, school, schools nationwide, but requested that this be extended to more schools. Perhaps let's raise that as a concern that um, it doesn't reach out to uh, 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 rural school. So that in our, in our recommendation, like we, we have captured it there, that uh, I think it's last part one, that the committee encourages AMSCO to expand the number of schools, rural schools to which it conducts, uh, conducts outreach programs and to report on these in the 2020, 2021 report. Now that was raise the concern and then in our recommendation, we raise it as a recommendation. Is there any other thing, colleagues, that you may want to that you want to uh, raise on, on the report before we adopt it? Let me invite you, uh, Peter and, and Velem, to comment on on the on, on the comments by the colleagues. Can you reflect on the comments? Uh, if I can go first, Chair. Um, yes. With regards to Mr. Marais' input, um, yes. uh, the legal compliance and then the United Nations regulations and what, we can list that as an observation and then also make a, uh, a recommendation in, in that regard. Um, somebody... Peter, I'm not too sure if um, you, I think uh, Mr. Marais was on page six. Have you, have you looked at page six uh, of, of, uh, of the report? I thought that um, we, we are restating what is in the what the department says. Uh, I, 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 no, I understand, Chair, um, but he was basically asking the questions, you know, uh, with regards to that legal dimension in their situation and analysis as, as, as to whether we shouldn't also um, emphasize that the department should adhere to United Nations regulations and and, 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 and the resolutions. So so I thought we can we can cover that by first listing it as an observation and this just asking them you know whether they are indeed you know compliant with the United Nations resolutions etc. But has there been anything that suggests that they're not complying? I I, I don't think so. No, but it is still it is still an observation in terms of uh, of our other type of responsibility, sir. No, no, no. I'm 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 saying has there been anything in the presentation, uh, Mr. Marais, or in your interaction with the department that suggests no, that no, is no, none no. adherence? Not, not, no, not, not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, no. I, I don't think that we should raise anything that um, really has not come up as a concern. You know, uh, no. yeah. All right. But, but, it's still, but it's still a it's it's still a requirement, an obligation. No, no, no. It's a requirement. They are stating it that they are they, is, they are adhering to the international law, right? But we have not observed anything untoward towards that that we can raise as an observation and make a recommendation on. All right, I think we can skip that. Can we move this, the second point? The second point, what was the second point? Um, the second one, Chair, was on page eight. Um, the capability sustainment, um, maintaining prime mission equipment at a set level. And the question was, you know, but what is this uh, set level? But, and but, whether this set level should not actually be clarified. Yes, but no, no, you, have, you are restating what is in the in their straight plan and the annual performance uh, plan, isn't it? Peter? Yes, sir, but that was the concern raised by Mr. Marie. That what is the set plan? What is the set level? What is the set level? And, and we're raising it as an observation. Uh, how do you present it as an observation? Uh, Mr. Marie, do you want to assist on that one? Mr. Mare? Mr. Mare has left. Uh, Chair, if I might come in quickly yeah. uh, with regards can, to the, just... the set level. Um, uh, 
in program two of the Department of Defense, which is the force employment um, uh, uh, program, there is a target around compliance with force levels, but this is a classified target. So if we would like to know more information about that or make a recommendation about that, it should be um, in terms of either a closed meeting or the uh, information should be shared with the Joint Standing Committee of Intelligence. Um, because throughout the Department of Defense's uh, annual, uh, sorry, APP, uh, that is re uh, regarded as a uh, classified target. I see, because the question Correct. is, what, what is the set level? What, okay. But you're saying it's, it's that is, is a classified target. Yes, can I just come in, Chairperson? Remember in the past, uh, on, on their on their annual reports to us. Yes, we, we don't change anything what is in their report to us, but it's our obligation and our 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 privilege uh, to to ask uh, to make observations and obviously to ask for more clarity on that and that they must report back to us. If it's a if it's a classified, obviously. Um, you know, then it will be in a closed setting. I mean, we're not going to ask anything else than they can report to us. But if we don't flag it and raise it, then there are obviously no obligation on the department or the minister to come back to us with any information. Um, so, so, so even even in terms of the UN uh, requirements and regulations, yes, I mean it's their report, but it's still our ob our obligation to make sure that whatever happens is that we confirm that we are in compliance and we will be in compliance with the UN regulations going forward. I mean, we are a member of the UN um, and, and it's important for our ambassador also there to show that we are taking cognizance of that and we are just confirming that. Yeah, I think that right. in other words, we'll not be able to, to, to measure their performance against a set level if we don't know what was the percentage uh, compliance that was required uh, in the first place. Yeah, and I think this is part of part of our oversight responsibility uh, going forward. So, so we're not asking anything that is that is no. untowards. No, 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 I agree. I agree. The question is, what is the percentage compliance with the set level, right? And uh, that they yeah. want to set as a target. So that we are then able to monitor this thing going forward, and uh, and then yeah. Peter and Vilem are saying this was is classif classified, yeah. but that does not stop us from raising this as an issue. It's fine. Uh, right. Exactly. Okay. 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 Just make an observation on that. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, uh, all right. Any other uh, the other issues that uh, he raised? Yeah, Chair, the, the next one was just an issue with regards to the austerity measures, uh, because we made a recommendation with regards to the department, um, you know, um, that they should actually apply austerity measures. Um, and we didn't uh, mention that with regards to ANCO. And he's just suggesting that we should include a similar recommendation with regards to, to ANCO, that they should also apply austerity measures. Yes, um, I, I, I think we, we, we can grant that uh, as an observation and we must make a recommendation on it. Uh, on it. All right. Uh, any other? Um, Chair, the, the last one, it is just that um, in our observations and in our recommendations, um, we didn't refer to the dockyard. And the dockyard uh, has been in financial troubles uh, before. Um, but they are starting to, to, to turn it around. Um, um, then this year we see that they will make a, a profit of around uh, 300,000 rand, and they've also decreased their HR uh, or their personnel from 526 to 458. So um, I'm not sure whether we should include that as an observation and a recommendation, because according to the report that the, the dockyard is actually now, uh, you know, uh, a turning, uh, his turnaround strategy is actually working. Uh, so I'm not sure whether Mr. Marie want to maybe clarify that specific observation. Would you clarify it, Marie? But we um, this matter is, was not raised in our discussion. 
uh, is coming up for the first time. Uh, no, so I make... think, no, I think we have we have talked about the dockyard uh, in our discussion. Not, 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 uh, not but... last meeting, Mr. Mare. I'm saying it was not in the raised in the last meeting, but I I know that in the previous meetings, yes, you know, before the last was raised. Yeah, I think the the only the only point that I want to raise is that the dockyard has been a concern in the past, and going forward, they must just you know report regularly back to us on the performance or challenges with regards to the dockyard, um, because that's something that we want to see work going into the future, uh, and we don't want to see that slip through the cracks, uh, and then we find out too late. Um, so I think it's just that that was just a for me, an observation and a recommendation that they must just keep us informed with regard to the progress on the dockyard. All right. So th that is captured. Thank Any you. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Okay. Any other? Uh, Chair, those are the four that I had from Mr. Murray. Yes. Colleagues, yes. I, 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 yes, okay. I think we have dealt with the four. And uh, and the one that I've raised, uh, you saw it where I said um, uh, on the castle uh, the, 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 that their outreach program it seems to be limited to semi and uh, semi urban and urban schools, but we want it uh, rolled out to to cover the, the rural schools as well. Yes, thank you. I've covered that one as well. Covered that one, yeah. So that was the only omission I couldn't pick up when I was I went I was going through the report. Right. And any other colleagues uh, before we we close? Uh, it's uh, six minutes uh, to twelve o'clock. All right. So not anything, not anything else. But I want to propose for those amendments um, that we accept the report. So that is the uh, proposal that we accept the report. Uh, any seconder? Yeah, I want to chair with those amendments. The report is seconded with the amendments. Now we now have a, a report uh, of vote uh, 23. Uh, the DOD, the Department of Defense, uh, together with its two uh, entities, CCP and uh, and uh, what you call and um, and, um, and AMSCO. So thank you very much, uh, colleagues, uh, on that. But just before we we move off, uh, Mr. Mara, I can see your lips. Are you wanting to say something? I just want to say you can be very proud of your committee, eh? Uh, our, our Mr. Our Honorable Mutley yes. and I work together, eh? I, I am. I am. I am very, very proud. Uh, we, I'm, I'm happy that we we are able to uh, move things faster, and 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 largely with uh, uh, agreement. Now, uh, the next week, Brian. Brian. Yes, sir. Yes. What is next week? Uh, what are we having next week? Uh, are we meeting next week? We are. Chair, we are meeting next week uh, on Friday. Uh, that will be the 22nd. Uh, you'll remember, Chair, we are meeting uh, on the Khoisan uh, proposal uh, uh, on, on the uh, for a bill uh, on the integration of the Khoisan uh, self-defense uh, unit members. Uh, the second item thereafter will be the consideration and adoption of the report uh, of the Department of Military Veterans. Correct. You will recall, members, that uh, the initially this meeting that uh, Brian is referring to was scheduled to take place on, on Wednesday. And due to scheduling, we depart with portfolio committees requiring um, uh, you know, three hours instead of two hours. It meant that some some meetings had tend to be shifted to a, a later day, so that's how we got affected. And that also gives us three hours instead of two hours. So I'm happy that we are back to a three, two to three hours. And um, so Friday next week we are meeting to consider those two uh, items. And uh, the first item on the Khoisan, they've not they've written to. I'm not aware of a person they've not written to. They've written to the president, to the, the minister of defense, and the two, they've been to public protector. The amateur has been to a court in, in Gauteng, 
And uh, lastly, uh, the the votes are written to to the min to Parliament, uh, to the Speaker. Uh, the Speaker then referred the letter to us so that we uh, consider the, the their issue and then report back uh, to her and and and, and, and or, or through Parliament, uh, the National Assembly. So that's where we are. So we are bringing this matter back on the agenda. It's been in Parliament. Uh, many times, but it's the first time that we are dealing with this matter directly. In the past, it will come up in the context of other discussions, like for instance, when they, they were discussing the amendment of the defense laws. Uh, one of the amend of, of the laws that they were amending was the the one that relates termination of uh, uh, you know in uh, intake uh, act or something. And they, so they came up and said, "No, look, why are you terminate? Why are you amending, repealing this legislation? Because um, we, our issue has not been uh, canvassed. So it got discussed there, but again, it was in, in passing. For the first time that we are dealing with it uh, directly, we have since asked that uh, the researcher just go back, research the history of the of the issue." Uh, starting from the time when the integration uh, was, um, you know, was done, uh, up until the the time when the integration was closed, we want to see how, um, where, what happened there, and how they might have uh, fallen through the cracks if there was any uh, such, and and then uh, the legal advisor would then come in uh, of Parliament. To give us the legal aspect to it, how has the court handled the matter? How has the public protector handled the matter? And how we must handle it uh, going forward? So, in that meeting, uh, we will receive a presentation from our researcher, uh, Velem, has produced a report which will be circulated to all of us. And I'm also expecting another report from the legal section that look at that looks at the matter legally. That too will be forwarded to to to, to members. And um, the, the, in preparation for a meeting with uh, the 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 Khoisan.